Today, we'll get a check on how the 14 victims in Heston are doing two days after the attack. Cedric Ford shot them and killed three others on Thursday. 41 Action News anchor Krista Dubill takes us uh, through what happened step by step. The three shootings happened within a seven mile radius in the towns of Newton and Heston. Around 3 30 p.m., a sheriff deputy served Cedric Ford with a permanent protection order at Excel Industries. An hour later, Ford did not return from his break at work. Then, around 5 p.m., investigators say Ford shot a man in a neighborhood near his Newton home. Just moments later, Ford shot a driver and stole the vehicle. Then, minutes later, Ford drove to the Excel Industries plant and shot 14 people. At 5.23 p.m. Thursday, an officer shot and killed Ford. Krista Dubell, 41 Action News. 41 Action News sent several crews to Heston to gather the facts and share the stories of those affected by this tragedy. That includes 41 Action News anchor Mike Marusar. He joins us live from Heston right now with what the community is doing and how they're mourning from those. And uh, we're hearing more from those who escaped alive. Good morning, Mike. Well, good morning, Richard. So many people waking up here in Heston with still so many questions. The investigation continues behind me. We're hearing that two, three hundred people were working inside Excel Industries at the time of this shooting. Workers tell me there was a large open area, so a lot of people gathered in one particular spot, including Anita Rodriguez. We ran into her and she was describing just the 24 minutes of horror as the gunfire began. She saw people scatter and she began to, to run as well. And in her mind, she was thinking of her five year old son. I thought like a mower was backfiring or like some pallets were dropping. I didn't really think nothing of it at first. And then I seen people running and it still didn't click. And one of my friends I was shot, his aunt, she was running. She's like, what on, someone's shooting. Well, as people scattered and they finally made their way outside, some people didn't even realize that they had been injured until they finally came out. Other workers helping each other until EMS could arrive. Some of the people describing, they even had to point out the fact that uh, some of their friends and co-workers were shot once they realized the blood was coming. And he came out and we, we noticed he was shot. And so I stayed with him for a while and, and uh, I tried to wave down, you know, police, law enforcement or make sure that, you know, uh, ambulance was coming out. We also heard from a man named Dennis Britton. He was one of the people who escaped. He survived, but he was shot in all of this, and he talked about the pain when that bullet entered his body. I was going to die. Honestly, like, I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, I seen the shooter at first. I, I didn't know what was going on, and then, and then I seen the shooter, and real, it actually hit me what was going on. And, I really thought I was going to die. Now, I didn't see him shoot me. I seen him shoot two other people, though, as I was getting ready to be transported outside. He came up and shoot two of the guys that were helping me make it outside. Many of the people who escaped actually came and ran right across the street in this area and waited for police and other ambulances as they were coming to Excel Industries here. Of course, the people who escaped, the people who survived are the fortunate ones. Three people died in all of this, though. Their identities confirmed just a couple of uh, days ago. Actually, yesterday, they were confirmed by authorities. 30-year-old Renee Benjamin, 31-year-old Josh Higby, and 44-year-old Brian Sadowski. And a cousin of Sadowski remembered his loved one. He was always there for me, no matter what. You know, we didn't talk every day, but he was always that one person I could call, and he was right there. So many surrounding towns coming here to Heston to offer whatever assistance they could provide, including just a, a shoulder to lean on. Last night, we attended a vigil that happened just down the way here. There's a park that's right across the street from the plant. So in the shadow of the plant, so many people huddled together. They hugged, and they remember the people who were affected by all of this. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We love you, Lord. They came to share stories of suffering. She always had this love. And survival. People were holding him up and he had like two or three gunshots in his back. Amanda Gomez escaped but saw her nephew seconds after he was shot. He was in a paint suit because he had gotten shot in the booth. And, um, you know, like seeing all that blood on the pure white just made it that much worse. He is one of 14 injured 
but made it out alive. He just grabbed my hand and he was like, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Three workers died. I was good friends with Brian. I just want everybody to have prayers for him and his family. People who knew 44-year-old Brian Sanowski remembered his passion for the Pittsburgh Steelers and his sense of humor. He was always such a jokester in school. Renee Benjamin was 30. Friends say she loved music, dancing, and flashing a smile. She loved to read. She was a reader. Nobody really knew that. We loved to go to Colorado. She loved the mountains. And 31-year-old Josh Higby was a welder. Co-workers say his true passion was his fiance and four-year-old son. Things like this, they burn a hole in you. It's never going to go away. But you can kind of fill that hole a little bit. You just, just talk with each other. And even with all the hugs in Heston, it's hard to truly wrap your arms around what happened here. Until I drove past today, and then it just hit me, and I was like, "Wow, it really happened in small town Heston." Just to give you an idea of what kind of town this is, we're talking about less than 4,000 people who live here. We ran into a guy who owns a utility building just down the way. There's a bathroom in there. He said he left the bathroom unlocked so emergency workers could use the restroom, get a cup of coffee, sort of relax, even media. And then there's a general store down this way who offered to get, actually gave our crew some food and, and said, you're welcome here anytime, unfortunately, under these circumstances. Live in Heston, Mike Maruzar's 41 Action News today.